Hi, in this video, we're going to look at hover bikes. While we have seen many kinds of EV toll aircraft emerge lately, the aerospace companies venturing into making hover bikes are far and few between. What are the technical issues that make hover bikes more challenging? And what companies are taking up the challenge will be covered in detail in this video. Hover bikes here imply an aircraft where the pilot sits in a prone position or on a saddle and therefore flying machines like the Jetson 1 and the SkyDrive have not been considered. Hover bikes have been part of science fiction for a while. They have featured in movies like Judge Dredd, The Island and most iconic of all, the speeder bike from Star Wars. There's an appeal in flying them. Just lean in the direction you want to go and they will follow. In other words, the pilot has kinesthetic control of the flying machine. They also offer the most unconfined way of travel that a pilot can experience. The third advantage is that they can fly close to the ground and can make use of the ground cushion effect. Interestingly, if we look back in aviation history, we find the development of the flying platform or the Hiller VZ-1 Pony as early as 1955. Although it wasn't a hover bike as such, it featured kinesthetic controls. The pilot just had to lean in the direction that he wanted to go and the flying platform flew in that direction. The machine was very simple and efficient. It featured two contra-rotating propellers in a duct. The pilot stood directly over a mesh that covered the inlet. A larger version of the Pawnee was also made with three propellers and three separate engines for redundancy and had an extended duct area. Unfortunately, the project was scrapped because for military applications, the pony was deemed too slow. In the recent past, we have seen the YouTuber Colin Furs make a hover bike on which he demonstrated getting airborne in one of his videos. He utilized two separate two-stroke engines connected directly to the propellers. In hindsight, it can be suggested that the use of coaxial rotors driven by electric motors and powered with batteries would have allowed him better flight characteristics. Using three sets of propellers, two at the back and one at the front, would have given him some roll stability, but full marks to him for trying and creating something that we can only dream of. So what is the main problem that plagues the design of an electric bike? The answer is simple is the aerodynamic instability. A pilot in a seated position with propellers underneath means the center of gravity of the aircraft with the pilot on board shifts upwards. The problem starts when the center of gravity becomes higher than the center of lift. This is because the rolling of the aircraft results in a torque that tilts the aircraft further. On the other hand, if the center of gravity remains below the center of lift, then tilting of the aircraft results in a writing moment. That is, if the aircraft is rolled, the moment or the resulting turning effect of forces brings it back to the neutral position. This gives an aircraft some stability. The best example in this regard is of certain lifeboats that are designed not to capsize. Even though in boats there is no center of lift, there is rather the center of buoyancy. So it's a good example to visualize. When a boat capsizes, its center of buoyancy remains below the center of gravity and therefore it cannot naturally bring itself back to its upright position. There are, however, certain lifeboats that have been designed such that this situation never arises and the boat itself rotates to a, an upright position even after it is capsized. With this example, one can appreciate the importance of natural stability of a vessel, be it seagoing or a flying vessel. This neatly brings us to hover bikes. The challenge is to keep their center of gravity lower than the center of lift for natural stability. This can be achieved by placing weighty components well below the pilot seat. The two aircraft companies that have delved into making hover bikes are Hoversurf and ALI Technologies. Both of them have demonstrated a working prototype in public. Let's first look at the Scorpion 3 by Hover Surf. It is as simple a hover bike design as possible. It has four open propellers that are placed at different levels to reduce the footprint of the hover bike. It has to be said 
that the idea of an open propeller design doesn't give confidence to either the pilot or the passerby, but it weighs only 104 kilograms and therefore passes the ultralight aircraft category in most countries. This means no pilot's license is required to fly it and no certification of the aircraft is required. This also means that the aircraft can be flown only in very limited areas and only under certain weather conditions. The Scorpion 3 specs mention that it can give up to 20 minutes of flying time and can cover distance of up to 8 miles. The maximum payload capacity is 100 kilograms. The next hover bike is the X Futurismo by ALI Technologies. It is a much larger flying machine with a weight of 300 kilograms and can take a payload of 100 kilograms. It is a hybrid bike that runs on two main lifting propellers that are powered by an IC engine and four yaw control propellers that are powered by electric motors. The listed flying time is 40 minutes and it has a top speed of 60 miles per hour. Its dimensions are 3.7 meters in length, 2.4 meters in width and 1.5 meters in height. So it's almost the dimension of a small car. Unlike the Scorpion 3, the blades are covered. Not only the ducted fans provide safety, but also provide higher efficiency, which is reflected in the much higher flying time. A price of over $500,000 has been mentioned for this limited edition hover bike when it will be available for purchase in 2023. There are two other hover bikes worth mentioning here that are under development. One of them is the Airwolf by the Czech company UDX. This hover bike is undergoing subscale tests at present. The four electric ducted fans will give it better lifting performance, which will result in longer flight times. The second one is by Jetpack Aviation and it's called the Speeder. Jetpack Aviation has over a decade long experience in building functional jetpacks. The Speeder is based on four jet engines. Two versions of the Speeder will be created. An ultralight version for which no pilot's license will be required, but training will be provided by Jetpack Aviation. The second heavier version will be able to carry up to five gallons of fuel, thereby giving the hover bike a longer range. Other than the X Turismo, all the mentioned design do not seem to have redundancy. In case of any single rotor failure, it would be difficult to control the aircraft as it is likely to pitch and roll and thereby making it difficult to land safely. At present, the hover bikes are more likely to be pursued as an extreme sport vehicle. However, as the technology matures, they can become a mode of transportation in the near future. So which one of the bikes mentioned here do you think has the potential for success? What is the kind of design you would like to see in a hover bike? Do let me know your thoughts in the comment section. And with this, the video is concluded. If you learned something from it, then please do consider giving it a thumbs up. Thank you for your attention.